Check your mouths, find your chairs, and get set for Halo 3 ODST 100% Badass Edition. Hello everybody, this is JP3 here, and I am sad to bring you the last entry in our Halo 3 ODST Legendary Playthrough 100% Badass Edition. We're on the final mission, Coastal Highway. But I'm not that sad, I'm not that down, because this one, this one's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah, it's in 720p, yeah, it has those old little breaks in it, because yeah, I recorded this with the Xbox One DVR way back in the day, but I promise you, this one's worth it. It's worth the wait, it's worth the dip in video quality. I can't wait to get started. This is one of the toughest, toughest missions to play on Legendary Difficulty, particularly solo. I'm Co-op, it really balances out, but solo, it can be a nightmare, which we will talk about extensively, or at least as needed. Not extensively, I'm not going to gripe about it. I, I definitely remember suffering a little bit to get this performance, uh, but not at this part. So just to tell you really quick what I'm doing here, I have actually found this to be a pretty safe approach to the start of this battle. If you just stay in between the the that light post and the grunt, he won't see you. You can come up here and just take the shotgun and start kicking ass and taking names. And as you uh, may know, I did not take weapons over with me uh, from the streets missions from Data Hive over to Coastal Highway. So just start out with the base stuff. And, uh, but, you know, I like the base stuff here. The sh pulling that shotgun out and uh, going that route is actually just fine here. Now, I am just softening up, softening them up a little bit since I do have access to the turret. And, uh, you know, they can throw as many freaking power drains as they want to. They're not going to stop this stuff, man. So, hoping to de-armor as many as possible. Uh, you know, take some health off of some of the grunts over there. That way the rocket launcher does an even better job. Now someone has thrown up the coward bubble shield, but that's fine. We can wait. We don't have to be in a hurry here. And that one goes down at just the right time. Notice we did take a little bit of a risk there exposing ourselves, but it totally worth it. Totally worth it. No sense in cowering behind cover. <laughs> that guy surprised me. I was not ready for him. So what I need to do here is hand off the rocket launcher to Dare. However, she has a pistol, I have a pistol, and so I can't really trade with her since I can't put the same weapon in both of my weapon slots. And so I've got to go find me something else besides the pistol if we're going to make this uh, trade off here. Now I just need to grab some health and pick up all the remaining rocket launcher ammunition that's in this area before we uh, head out of here. Before you go into the final section with that tank, you know, when you're about to stop off, you want to make sure that you have at least two rockets on you. To accomplish what I'm going to accomplish now right now I'm looking for grenades I'm scouting around I'm finding zilch probably I blew them up with the rocket but that's fine it was worth one more look at this city before it uh, goes up in flames I guess perhaps huh so I go over there and grab one more human grenade and uh, I'm punching them for no reason other than to do so this was one of my earlier performances, uh, which, you know, I, I would say I wasn't necessarily in the biggest hurry when doing this. Uh, I find, you know, Halo to be the most fun whenever you, uh, I don't know, where you're not focused so much on the time and when you're completing it. And so with later videos, I think I did focus on that a bit more. And I think I lost a little bit of the enjoyment uh, each time uh, when I was playing it, having that focus. But I do push Virgil here somewhat impatiently into the door. 
Now, if you notice a little bit more aggression than average uh, from me towards Buck, it's because, well, you know, I didn't get this the first time I tried it for this video. It took a little bit, and one of the first big things you need to know if you've not played this mission in a while, or if you haven't played it before, or if you're struggling with it on Legendary, is that Buck does not fire the turret when he is talking. And so you actually have to have some level of knowledge of when his uh, dialogue cues are going to occur when he's hamming it up with Just Veronica Dare. And so when he's talking, he's not shooting. He can't do both at the same time. It is very strange. And, and this is not just a buck thing. I've seen this in other Halos as well. I can't think of a great example right now. But I promise you, you need to be mindful of that. Now, the scariest grunt by far over here is the guy with the fuel rod. I believe we've already taken care of him or Dare ran him over. Uh, I was too busy making that point, which is so very pertinent and so very important. Because there's going to be a couple of different times you see me behave slightly differently. And it is almost always going to be because of Buck's uh, inability to be a good teammate at all. One thing that you may have already noticed is that he tends to shoot at bodies uh, or, or at an enemy that he's killed for somewhat of a very predetermined amount of time. So it really doesn't matter whether the uh, enemy is live or dead. He will continue to fire the turret and really slow things down, too. I'm not really sure why I didn't just blast him with that fuel rod, but another bit of good news, though, if we're, there's any about having Buck with you as opposed to a uh, human, a friend, a co-op partner, is that the Warthog in Halo 3 is invincible when he's in it. Uh, the Warthog, just like it is in Halo 2, is um, does not blow up on its own when a person I mean you know a, you or an NPC uh, is not going to be dying as a result of whatever attack it's taking and since Buck can't die uh, the war dog can't die from that grenade it gets beat up to its last inch of health so it of course will, would blow up very fast if we were both out of it and it took some damage but uh, at this juncture it is just fine as long as my health stays strong and Buck's on the turret. Mainly just Buck being on the turret. I mean, of course, I can die because of the garbage damage resistance you get in Halo 3 and to some degree in Halo 3 ODST uh, whenever you are taking hits in the Warthog, whether they're direct or not. But I think ODST did, did uh, help you a little bit with that relative to Halo 3, but not much. Now, some people like to give Buck a rocket launcher here and have him in the uh, gunners or in the passenger seat. Uh, I don't buy into that at all. I first of all, believe it or not, the fuel rod grunts really aren't a gigantic threat to the uh, Oliphant. They're just not. They're a gigantic threat to you, but not necessarily the Oliphant. So, um, even if they start to pelt her along the way here, it will take quite a bit of damage before she starts to freak out. Uh, so, the one thing you really need to know with respect to the Oliphant and the damage it takes is that what really hurts it is the high DPS sustained uh, plasma fire that can come from, say, these guys... Uh, from a lot of grunts firing it at once, and of, but not really. The main trouble you have to worry about is coming up pretty shortly where she'll be taking on uh, the plasma cannons of the Banshees and the Ghosts. Even still, I'm beating these things here because Buck got out and is doing something I don't know if I've ever seen before. I really don't know why the hell he's doing this. I hate this level in so many ways, more so than I ever love it, because of the way it plays on Legendary difficulty. Again, co-op partner, you don't have to deal with this. It's a much simpler level on co-op partner, with a co-op partner. So that's our first break. We'll only have one more, again, recorded with the Xbox One DVR, so it only records at 10 minutes at a time. I tried to make it as, as uh, the least amount of invasive as possible, so I apologize uh, if... 
it's still invasive e. Anyway, so again, we're really not at a hard part right now. The main concern we have here is just not getting stuck by a grunt grenade. That's the only concern we have here. They're probably not going to wear down her shields no matter what she says. It's when we get to the ghost section, which is right about now. This is the hardest part of the entire campaign. This, and in fact, I if remember up to me, uh, or if it's you know in my opinion, it's this exact part right here. So notice right there, I only have uh, two rockets left. Uh, I am no longer going to use the rocket launcher, although I do think there might be uh, more of it on down the line. So even though what I just said about you know, staying behind her, or I'm sorry, about uh, the Oliphant taking too much damage from the uh, forward plasma cannons. Still, if you have to, if you're not, if you don't get a leg up on these uh, these uh, ghosts, then your best chance to survive is not to be in the line of fire of one of these ghosts. The best chance you have is to get behind the Oliphant in some way, shape, or form, and that will definitely be the case from here on out, at least until we get the Scorpion. And good news here, Buck will not, or I'm um, excuse me, the Oliphant will not start proceeding. The gate will not start opening until Buck gets on that uh, Galsog turret. Now the same goes for the Galsog turret as it does for the uh, regular 50 cal turret. If he's talking, he will not fire it. And unfortunately, the Galsog uh, or the Gauss uh, weapon takes about three hits before it will take down one of these uh, banshees. Same, I believe, with the ghost, unless it hits it in its weak spot. So notice here, I'm just hiding behind the Oliphant. Uh, if Dare were to say something about the shields falling, there's really nothing I can do from any other position uh, that's any better than what I'm doing now, except for draw fire, which is a surefire way to get you killed uh, much faster than uh, she will in that Oliphant. So all that work the Buck's been doing finally starts to pay off as he takes down uh, three, I think, three Banshees in a row, or two banshees and a ghost or something My shields can't take much more of this. so we're just again uh, you know she's griping and that's fine but there is nothing better we can do except for just uh, shoot them down and hopefully not draw any Thanks, any fire because it, it just still it's it's just takes you down way too fast I'm not sure what I was doing there but uh, that Oliphant will not proceed until you cross the uh, gate barrier there. So keep that in mind from not only at this point, but of course behind me as well. So this is a part where you need to be very careful. Buck and Veronica have lines here and there's a Banshee right there. You want to stay back. He's not going to shoot at it until he stops talking. Notice the gaps there that are completely inexplicable unless what I said is true. So the Wraith would seem scary but it generally is not for the for the Oliphant it is better to stay back protect yourself and let Buck take out the ghost he oftentimes does this crap when shooting at the Wraith so the Wraith is not even worth trying to take out um, if I you know if, if I was uh, a little more patient with this game I probably would take the scorpion and blow it up just to do it but I get so frustrated seeing me do everything I can to make that Wraith go down and have Buck just continually hit the wrong thing. Which he can shoot over. He's just aiming at a single point on that Wraith that he can't get to with that barrier there. So he just, he won't adjust. And so as a result of that, I'm not willing to give a crap about what happens to that Wraith. All I care about is making sure the Banshees and the Ghosts go down and I get in the Scorpion as soon as possible. Now the Banshees don't go down in one hit um, like they started doing on, uh, I believe starting with Reach. And they are very hard to lead and shoot for me at least relative to my uh, skills and abilities uh, in doing that with Halo 2 and Halo Reach. 
I really have no idea how to lead them properly uh, in this game because of the way they move. And notice this banshee here get trapped. The way I take down the phantoms here, which all have two ghosts on them, so you definitely don't want to deal with them later. Ghosts suck in Halo 3. Uh, is you just want to uh, blow them up now. I like to usually drive backwards while I'm blowing them up and usually you can take them down before they even have a chance to get past you much less uh, drop off their ghosts in the next section So the next section as a result is generally a freebie. It has a couple of turrets which shouldn't pre present much of a problem at all for you or the Oliphant. So there's turret one. I've learned over time that the best way to shoot those turrets from distance is to shoot slightly above them. I don't know if I did that there, but with this one that's coming up over here, I believe I miss it the first time when I think I have my reticles right on it. So then I just shoot slightly above it and nail it. Well, I love that music. That music gets me hyped. It makes me want to play this stage, but I really don't want to play this stage ever again on Legendary without a friend playing with me. I really don't know why I got out there except for that maybe I was checking to see what my fuel rod um, ammunition count was. I definitely want to have a lot of it, if at all possible. I have it full there. I think there's, I don't think there's rocket in that case after all, so anyway, just make sure if you want to do what you're going to see me do here, which is going to be somewhat unique, I, I'm not sure if anyone's ever done it quite like I'm about to do it and at least uh, put it on YouTube. But uh, yeah, you're going to see me play the uh, final battle very differently than what you've probably seen most people do. And I did something different on purpose, much like I did with Oni Alpha Side. I purposefully came up with a different plan uh, because I thought I could and eventually found something that worked. Again, right here, not really... Well, again, the scariest part there, of course, was that grunt with a grenade, which somehow, some way, brings us down pretty far there. But uh, you definitely, uh, in terms of our health, you definitely don't want to let these jumpers uh, get a hold of you. If they jump on your tank, they can beat it to death. Uh, notice how we can still take a fuel rod blast there. That's okay. The tank will not blow up as long as uh, Buck's on it. And if I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comment section, okay? So, really an unnecessary stop off here. There's health in the next in the uh, final section, but I might have done that so I can serve the health packs, the limited health packs that are in the final section. I don't believe I need them uh, this playthrough at all, but or maybe I do. I can't remember for sure. I don't want to speak too soon, sound like I'm bragging and then be wrong and sound like an idiot and an arrogant one at that. So yeah, maybe it's good to just to stop off there just in case. I mean, you gotta wait for that door to open anyway. You gotta wait for the Oliphant to come down here. There's really no reason to rush it. So our final little pause there, and uh, the rest of this will be uh, pause free. <laughs> so yeah, you can't destroy the scare, but why not shoot at it and prove that it's a, I don't know, a set piece with no AI. A scripted set piece. One of these days, one of these days, it's going to go down. I, 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 I don't know why I want to hold on to that belief, but I'm going to hold on to it as long as it feels good to do so. <laughs> All right, so you want to be 
in a hurry here as soon as you kill the grunts. I'll go ahead and get that out of the way just in case I forget to say it. So right now you want to be in, her, in a hurry because you want to take out these grunts before Buck comes over here and wakes them up and then they become, you know, a potential problem. I believe one or both are usually ultras, which means they throw a lot of grenades. So you just want to, yep, not an ultra, an ultra. So as soon as you kill them, run in here and grab rocket launcher ammunition unless you came here with a full amount, which would mean all eight. And just walk as straight as you can towards the carbine ammo ammo box. Grab some and start juggling it over here. So put the carbine right there beside your feet. And right now, the best thing uh, to do is to make sure that you are not seen by the Phantom. So that's the number one key point in how this strategy will work. Now notice they all get dropped off. That's great. And then this group gets dropped off, one of which has a fuel rod. Now he, in my testing of this, never turned around like that. Uh, but he didn't actually see us. It was actually these guys with these spikers. Now that power drain is scary, but notice, not spikers, uh, maulers, but notice that the mauler really isn't all that scary back here. They have trouble advancing on you at the kind of rate that would be scary. So he jumps to avoid that, or, you know, happens to avoid that fuel rod, but that's okay. I don't know if this guy went backwards, but I do want to put the rocket launcher down and go with the fuel rod here, because I have other plans for the rocket launcher. It will serve a, an excellent purpose, uh, two excellent purposes, uh, before we're done with it. So notice how the grunts and uh, later on you'll see the jackals do this. They kind of have trouble. They don't really know what to do. They're supposed to be going towards uh, you know where Buck and Dare and the engineer are. But at the same time, they know you're over here, so they kind of get a little confuzzled. And that tends to work to your advantage. Now, one thing that I definitely need to do is get back to that point I was at as soon as this wave ends. So if I go up there and actually kill that guy, I won't be able to make it back to my spot and the Phantom not see me. And if the Phantom sees me, then my strategy can potentially go all to hell. I'm not so sure it would, though, given what happens. But uh, So right now, I just got to hope that... Uh, Dare uses that rocket launcher, which she appears not to be concerned with using it at all. And Buck, I think, takes the guy out with whatever weapon he's holding right now. Which is probably not one that's any good for what he's supposed to be doing. As far as I know, he's still holding that assault rifle. But anyway. So, for this Phantom, this is the one that drops off all the jackals, particularly the snipers. They drop off back here. We take advantage of that knowledge with this rocket and that rocket no more jackal snipers and as far as I remember no more carbine jackals either the carbines are backup weapon back here it's not necessary but at this point right now the best bet is to go ahead and put down the uh, or no 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 the thing to do right now is to wait 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 because guess what gets dropped off here the hunters and so the final use of the rocket launcher will occur when we take the hunters down with it. Which will occur summarily. They take two rockets to kill. But sometimes it can be less if one takes uh, damage that you, you know, meant for the other. So we have one rocket left. Uh, normally you'd have zero. But uh, because they were so close together... Uh, it made it to where that worked out really, really well. But, you know, again, remember what I said. If you wanted to try to execute that strategy, your absolute best bet is to come in there with a full uh, complement of rocket launcher ammunition. I promise the shooting doesn't get any... <laughs> the shooting gets considerably better after those ridiculous misses. <laughs> Ugh. 
Oh, brother. So now that they are all dead, we have the final wave coming in. This wave uh, will have a chieftain. But he's not a big deal. I had to look and see and make sure all the snipers were gone. And they indeed were. To my utter surprise. Well, not really. That, that was happening quite regularly. Those, uh, those rockets working the way they did. So right now, I just want to let the Brutes get all set up and in their position, but mainly and most importantly, I want this Troll Phantom to get the hell out of here. Now, if you looked and saw there very briefly, uh, I was, I, I guess what I saw there was uh, the, it looks like the Brutes uh, power drained themselves over there, so we were able to get one from a distance pretty easily as a result because he had no armor. So somewhat of a comedy of errors there for the Brutes. Yeah, there's that one who went down, and again, he had lost his armor because of his own stupidity. So notice the vantage point we have here sniping. It's just beautiful. So we're out of sniper rifle, which is fine. The chieftain will be right there waiting for us when we want to, when we come back to him. If there's any reason why I did not go back and redo this, it's this. Yes! <laughs> I don't care how much of that is luck. That feels good every time. Let <laughs> I me mean, talk about your ultimate troll grenade from player one. So now we go back and get this sniper rifle. And again, how many more enemies do we have to kill? I don't know. It's not that many at all. The chieftain is totally geared on killing us. But for whatever reason, when you're up here, he likes to just hang out down here. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me why. But you know what? This dude does not even need a scope. Why even use it if you don't need it? Get down. Get down on your knees and pray. And the sweetest sight you'll ever see when you've gone no deaths in Coastal Highway is that phantom showing up right there. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss doing the commentaries for these. Uh, this is just a... Such a fun campaign to play. Just a really, really beautiful. Beautiful... In every way. What art design, level design, the music, the color, just everything. It's just, it, it's such a treat to be able to go through all this once more with you guys. I did not finish out the final cutscene here. Um, I probably just, uh, at the time, was just happy to get it over with. And, um, so yeah, I apologize for its uh, lack of inclusion here. Well, guys, uh, I want to hear what you got to say about uh, Coastal Highway. Uh, my very strange and interesting strategy that I took with it. Uh, just anything else you have to say about it, uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, hit that notifications bell if you haven't already. This is JP3 signing out. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you very, 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 very much for watching. Goodbye.